Hello everyone, I'm Andy Davo and welcome to my team power rankings for Blood Bowl 3. One of the questions I get often asked when I'm streaming uh, from newer coaches is, Hey Andy, what's the best team in Blood Bowl? Or, Hey Andy, what's the most powerful team in Blood Bowl? And the answer to that question is really interesting, but it's also quite complicated. Because Blood Bowl is not like uh, a normal sort of first person shooter or something like that, where you've just got the most powerful gun or the best rifle. All the different teams go through different power curves and are better at different points because some teams like playing at low team value with only a few skills. Maybe their competition is is weaker. Uh, and maybe some teams really like uh, adding lots and lots of skills because their skill access is really good. So they're not good at the start, but they get really, bet uh, really good later on. So with that in mind, I'm going to try and answer that question, but I'm going to do it over four different uh, brackets. First of all, we're going to look at absolutely fresh TV 1000 teams, rookie teams, if you will. Then I'm going to move into uh, low team value teams where you've probably played somewhere between I don't know, two or three and, and maybe 10 games, somewhere in that region. But really, the team value is the thing that defines this. And then we'll move into mid team value teams, uh, which are somewhere between about 1350 and 1750. And then uh, to round it out, we'll look at the high TV league teams. Yeah, what are the most powerful end game teams that you might come across? Uh, if you really want to play for end game content. So, with that in mind, let's look at the 12 teams which we've got along the bottom here and what what a, what's hot and what's not. So, let's start with what's not. Uh, one of the teams that I think are probably the, the worst, or if not possibly the worst, is starting Nurgle. Nurgle have to give up an awful lot in their starting roster to, to get anything going. For example, they've got access to a strength 5 big guy, they've got 4 strength 4 players, they've got 4 pestigores, uh, but unfortunately, they can't get any of that if they want to have any re-rolls. So, uh, they give up an awful lot. If you haven't checked it out, there's a Nurgle guide that I did a few days ago that'll be floating around on YouTube somewhere. So, Nurgle are probably the weakest starting team because they have to give up so much uh, just to get a, a TV1000 team. Now, at the other end of the scale, let's think about a team that doesn't give anything up at all uh, for TV1000. In fact, just picks everything that they want. And that is absolutely Dwarves. Uh, dwarves are probably one of the most powerful teams at, low, at, at, at fresh team value, which is they've got the two, they can have two Slayers if they want. They've got the two Blitzes, they've got the two Runners, they get three rerolls. They've Everyone's got block apart from the Runners. Um, they really are just a very, very powerful team. And, and while they don't win load because they're slow, so I'm not saying that they went out without drawbacks, they are an incredibly beginner friendly or very powerful team at the start. I'm now going to pick out something that is not great at the start, but gets better. Uh, and that is Chaos Renegades. Now, Chaos Renegades definitely don't belong in the A tier, for example. Yes, they've got the ability to field a big guy. They've got the ability to field four strength four players. Uh, and everyone can blitz on strength four as a minimum. But they don't belong in A tier because they've got no block. Uh, they've got no tackle. They've got no guard. They've got no, no fighting skills. And they are a combat orientated team. But also, they've got really minimal uh, ball handling. They've got no one sure hands. They've got no reliability. So I think Chaos Chosen sit either in the B tier or the C tier. Um, I'm going to put them in the B tier for now on the basis that they can still field four strength four players. Their remaining seven players are beastmen. And then they field three rerolls, which is, which is pretty solid. It's not great. It's not terrible. So therefore, we're going to put them in the B tier. Maybe we move them at the end. Uh, next, I'm going to pick out uh, one of the other teams that come out of the box, I'm going to put humans straight in A tier. Sorry, S tier. Uh, and the reason putting humans in S tier is because, again, they're like dwarves. They get everything they need straight away. And their rosters are really powerful. This, again, is talking about, excuse me, rookie team versus rookie team. And I think humans' rookie team roster is very strong, certainly when you compare it to a lot of these other rosters. What else have we got to pick out? Uh, so let's go and pick out, I'm going to pick out Orcs next. Orcs are a team that I quite enjoy playing. I actually quite enjoy memeing with them and taking a load of frenzy on the big ones. So um, where do Orcs sit in this power curve? They're certainly not down at the bottom. Yes, they have to compromise a little bit on their roster, um, but they are still fielding four strength fours, um, four blitzes with block, everyone's armor nine. They're not slow anymore like the old Orcs. So the question really is, if they don't sit down here, do they get to sit in A tier? Uh, sorry, S tier. And I think no, because they do have to compromise. So I'm going to put them in the A tier. They're definitely better than Chaos Chosen, but they're probably not quite as strong as Dwarves and Humans. 
Right, next one, I'm going to pick out Black Orcs. Uh, Black Orcs are just a fundamentally bad roster. You can look at the win rates, they don't do very well. <clears throat> and, and why is that? Well, for me, it's two reasons. Uh, reason number one, the Black Orcs only movement four. That's incredibly slow, so they struggle to dominate the pitch. And then their linemen, or the ball carriers, are goblins, which are AV8+. Plus, and they also, because they've got stunty, they're easy to kill. So they're, they're slow and fragile. Not really a great combination. Um, the question is, do they sit in D tier or do they sit in the C tier? I'm going to put them in C tier because while Nurgle are truly terrible, Blackhawks can field a pretty solid roster for Blackhawks. So I'm going to put them there. That gives us a baseline in terms of where to put the rest of these teams now. So uh, next one I'm going to dig out is Skaven. Um, Skaven are definitely up near the top here. So is it, is it B, A or S? Um, let's just put them there for a second and think about the roster. They can field a big guy. They can field two strength, three strength access players. They can field, I think it's three gutter runners out of the gate. Uh, they've got lots of flexibility. They are having to give up something, so I don't think they quite necessarily sit in S tier, although their win rate would suggest they possibly sit in S tier. Um, so I'm going to put them in the A tier because they are giving up a little bit of stuff when they build their roster. But it, I'm sure people might say, actually, Andy, I disagree. I think they're S tier. And, and really... I think they're they're some of this. They're, they're in one of these two tiers. They're they're very strong. Uh, next, we're going to take out Union Elves. So, where are Union Elves? Well, again, they have to compromise a little bit on the roster. They don't get all of the toys straight away, but um, they are an incredible. Yeah, they're, they're a strong elf team. The problem is the elf linemen are movement six. And then, if we think about what a basic elf um, Union Elf team would be, it will be two blitzes, one catcher, one thrower. The rest are linemen and three rerolls. It's pretty good, but it's not super powerful when you would want to be fielding two blitzes, three catches, a thrower, uh, three rerolls. So you're skimping out on two of your catches. Does that put them in the A tier or the B tier? I think they're possibly stronger than Chaos Chosen, but are they are they as good as Skaven or, or Orcs? I think not. So I think they are. I think they're this way around. I think they're they're really strong B tier, um, possibly A tier. Next, Chaos Renegades. Well, if we put Chaos Renegades, uh, Chaos Chosen in B tier, I'm going to lump Chaos Chosen in there. Chaos Renegades. In fact, I might even put Chaos Renegades in C tier because you've got to field three. You, know, you don't have to, but you can field three big guys. You've only got 11 players. Um, I think the three big guys makes them inherently unstable and they've got no starting skills whatsoever. So I'm actually going to lump them with the Black Orcs. I think they're worse than Chaos Chosen because of their instability and I'm using Chaos Chosen as a baseline to work against. Now, they're definitely not as good as... Yeah, they're not in the same league as Union Elves. So I'm going to put Chaos Renegades in C tier. I've played a fair bit of Chaos Renegades at the start of Blood Bowl 3. Uh, and therefore, my experience suggests that I think they're, they're a C tier team. Um, next, I'm going to take out Dark Elves. So where do Dark Elves sit? I'd like to put them in the S tier. I'd like to put them in the S tier. But... Dark Elves have got four access to four Blitzers, two Witch Elves, two Assassins if you really want to play uh, Crazy Blood Bowl. They've got the ac access to two Runners. So all of those players are Movement 7. They could be really good. But what do you actually get? What's a realistic roster? Four Blitzers, seven Linemen, two Rerolls, three Blitzers, a Witch Elf, load of Linemen, two Rerolls. They can't be I can't possibly group them in the S tier if that's what they're getting. And actually, I'm actually going to put them down here because I think absolutely just give you fresh Dark Elves. I think they're actually worse than Orcs, and I think they're worse than Skaven. They're giving up more of their fun toys. So I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to put them in B tier. Uh, we've got two left to pick from. So I've got Old World and Ability or... Um, sorry, Old World Alliance or Nobility. Uh, Old World Alliance are a weird team. I don't massively like them uh, overall, and I'm trying to therefore be balanced in my viewpoint with this nagging, laggling doubt that I don't think they're any good. <laughs> and so if that nagging doubt is going to keep manifesting, where do I put them? C or D? Um, I think I think you can get a reasonable roster with them. So I'm going to put them in C tier. But you know, over the course of this video, I don't see them doing very well. And then the final team, Imperial Ability. So Imperial Ability are a team that base their entire game plan around a really good defense. They've got lots of players with Stand Firm and Fend. They've got some block. 
They've got the ability to move the ball a little bit. The only problem, of course, is that all of these players are expensive. So they're certainly not in S tier, although from a positional point of view, they're, they're an S tier team um, at lower team value. I don't think they're as um, good as, uh, as either Orcs or Skaven, so I don't think I'm going to put them in the A tier. And I think I'm going to sit them in the B tier because they are giving up a fair bit of stuff. There's an argument possibly to put them in here, in C tier. And so I think it's B or C for me. And I'm going to put them in the B tier because they're okay. They're okay. So, have I got all this right? Do I think Dwarves and Humans are in the S tier? Yes, I still do. I think Orcs and Skaven are, are still in the A tier. Um, while I, yeah, I think possibly Skaven got up here, but I, I think I think these are these are S A tier teams. Um, all of these seem reasonable here. I don't think I want to change any of that. Black Orcs I don't want to change. Chaos Renegades I don't want to uprate. Old World Alliance I don't want to kick down, and I'm definitely not moving Nurgle. So that's the rookie starter teams one. Uh, we will be publishing all of these onto uh, Twitter and possibly Facebook. So if you want to take screenshots, uh, you're welcome to do so, but they will be published. So let's move on to the next one. That's low team value teams. And low team value, as I'm defining here, is between sort of 1050 uh, and 1350. It's it, it could have been 1010 really, to be honest, but I'm just talking about a team that's picked up one or two skills all the way up to about 1350 uh, or so. So... Where does that take us? Well, let's go and look at the last ones. So we've got Dwarves and Humans. Let's go and dig those out and see whether they've moved. Um, dwarves, if you add skills to them, you're adding Guard. That is broadly all you're doing. So they were already here. I don't think they're going to get any weaker adding Guard because you've got now Block, Tackle, Guard players or Block, Guard players. Your opponent is still sticking Block on most of their players. You've got your three rerolls. They're not inherently expensive. I'm, I'm leaving them at the top end of S tier now. And in fact, I think Dwarves, if they were decent at 1,000 team value, they're just obnoxious now at this team value point. So I think I'm going to leave them there. The other one we had up here in Humans in S tier um, is now a tricky one. I'm not sure that their roster absolutely stands up to being an S tier roster. And I think I'm going to drop them to A tier. Yes, you're going to put guard on some blitzes. But I think at this point, you're now playing into other teams like Orcs, for example, um, that have now picked up some core skills and you're just strength three. You're just agility three. You don't have cheap stats like you did in Blood Bowl 2. So I'm going to drop them down to A tier. I still think they're a good team. I still think they're very viable. But I don't think they're S tier uh, anymore. <clears throat> right, what else are we going to look at? So now let's look at Orcs and Skaven, which we had on the previous one. So where do I see Orcs and Skaven? Well, I had a... I had a, a Skaven which was sat here previously in A tier. I think you can move them up here. I think Skaven, if you want to go and win some games of Blood Bowl, um, I think you can now argue that adding a couple of skills, and because they've got to pick the skills they want now, it's primaries and secondaries rather than randoming. Uh, their Rat Ogre has got the ability to help them force a one-turn touchdown. Uh, yeah, they're just really strong. They're, they're really, really strong. And I think, um, I think they're probably these are the two stronger races at this point. Um, whether or the other ones will catch up, I don't know. So Orcs, they were in A tier. Have they continued to add? And are they going to go to S tier? So at 1300 team value, what are you playing with an Orc team? Probably four biggins with block, possibly a bit of smattering of guard. You'll have four blitzes all with guard, probably a smattering of mighty blow. You're going to have a sneaky git. I think actually I'm going to have to lift these up and put them in S tier. I think they, they get that strong. Because all the skills you're adding for Orcs are super duper awesome. And a lot of the Orc counters haven't really kicked off yet. So people with claws, they're not really there. So I think I'm going to put Orcs in S tier. Uh, flipping back to where we were. So I've done those four. Let's look at the four B tier teams. So uh, Union Elves, Chaos Chosen, Dark Elves in Imperial Ability. Where do we put those? So Dark Elves were in here. Um, Union Elves were in here. Imperial Ability were in here. And Chaos Chosen were in here. So I'm going to pick those four out now. So Dark Elves. I actually think Dark Elves become incredibly powerful at lower team value. For example, if you give me four Blitzers, I've now put Dodge on all four of those players. I've got four Armor 9 Plus Bludging players. I've got a Witch Elf, probably two, with Block, maybe Block Tackle, maybe Block Mighty Blow. And I'm actually going to lift these and put these in S tier. I think, I think Dark Elves operate 
straight away, as soon as you put some skills on them in on positionals, they just go from being reasonable to being super powerful. So these are super strong teams. I also think Union Elves get lifted up to the A tier because again, the Blitzers go block, dodge, sidestep. Um, you're going to be putting skills on the catchers. They're so easy to level. It's reasonable to assume that your first skills will be Blitzers and catchers. So I think both Elf teams suddenly come out of the gate flying and really lift up. Is there an argument to put them in the S tier? There is, but I don't think they're as good as Dark Elves. And I'm not having the best Elf team being Union Elves. So I'm going to put them in A tier and that's where they're staying. Maybe other people uh, might see differently. Uh, Imperial Ability, because they're an expensive roster, I can't see them at all going into the S tier. Uh, however, I think with their roster being able to be rounded out, they're going to become quite obnoxious to play against. And I think they're either a solid B tier team or possibly an A tier team. And I'm going to put them in A because I've put humans in A. Finally, Chaos Chosen. I'm not taking them out of this tier. I don't think that they have got a lot better. In fact, if you think about what's happened to a Chaos Chosen team, we've added block. Yay. <laughs> I've added maybe a block tackle or a block mighty blow. Um, or possibly a block guard on a Chaos Warrior. But I've not really added a lot of fun stuff. The team's still developing. You've not picked up any stats. Um, you can't reliably random. So I'm going to leave Chaos Chosen in the B tier. Um, let's put the remaining teams into the uh, into the grid. So these were the four teams as they were. And we're in Nurgle. Uh, Nurgle at low team value suck. And in, I'm not going to move them. So we're going to leave them there. Chaos Renegades I'm going to uprate because you're adding skills. And you're just adding block. And I found that as soon as I've got four or five skills on Chaos Chosen. Uh, sorry, Chaos Renegades. They become a lot more reliable. I'm not ready to put them in the A tier. Uh, you're still inherently playing with three big guys. And unless you've managed to get block on at least two of them, I don't think you can reliably move them up any higher than B tier. I think they, they, that's their ceiling. Uh, black Orcs, I'm going to leave in C tier. I don't think they're getting any better. And in fact, if you put a Black Orc team against the Dark Elf team uh, at 1200 team value, the Dark Elves will demolish them. <laughs> um, the Black Orcs just won't be able to keep up. And I also don't think Old World Alliance get any better than C tier. I would much rather play any of those teams uh, than, than either of these here. Um, with the exception of Nurgle. So that's my low TV options. And you can see that some teams are starting to get a lot better. So I'm not going to review this. I think that's absolutely my answer. Let's go on to the next team. So that was low team value. Let's look at medium team value. So new, new screen. So let's put all the teams that were in S tier uh, in, in here. So that was those two. We picked up Skaven and I picked up Orcs. So medium team value, 1360 to 1750. Now, the first one I'm going to cover is Dark Elves. Dark Elves just get better and better up until super high team value. So maybe you're going to work out where they're going to go in the next bracket. But I think they are also sort of S tier here as well. They slightly suffer from reliability issues at this point because the strength teams in this wider bracket will have Tackle Mighty Blow probably spammed and they will suffer games where they won't be able to keep up with the attrition however in this new meta they've got loads of guard access they've got loads of um strength randoming is seems seems like a reasonable skill for dark elves now and on top of that uh, they're going to have sneaky get dirty players so they've got some firepower i haven't had chance to play with them enough in a perpetual league setting but i think dark elves are super strong so i'm going to leave them in the s tier dwarves I, again, I'm going to leave them in the S tier because they're, they're natural predators. The claw players, they're not great. Their fouling teams are going to struggle to kill them off because they've got thick skull. So I'm going to leave them in here. And they'll now have a sneaky git death roller. So they'll have gone up another power banding. And in fact, if there was super S tier, I think you can argue that you could put dwarves, if you can put enough games into them, to super duper top end S tier uh, and would actually beat Dark Elves. So I'm going to put them at the start. I think that's the most powerful team in all of this. And then I'm going to draw and drag Orcs and put them next to them. Because I think Orcs and then Dark Elves as an even split for second place with Skaven then suffering because Armour 7 uh, at, at the high end of this team value bracket uh, causes them problems. However, they've still got the ability to really reliably one turn. They've got lots of firepower through different means like Claw and Mighty Blow and Sneaky Get Dirty Player. 
So I think I think the top four are still the top four. What do we have in the in the eight here? Uh, so I got humans, union elves, and imperial nobility. So let's go and fish those out. So humans, imperial nobility, and union elves. Right. So union elves, I think I'm going to leave them in the eight here. I don't think they get moved up. The catches will carry them through these matchups. However, they're going to struggle. Their roster is going to start to feel slow. They've only got movement six linemen. Uh, they catches there are only four of them they're also very expensive potentially they suffer some catastrophic damage and leveling a catcher from you know zero to four skills where they're super awesome i think you've got to you've got to say that there's a glass ceiling on union elves and that glass ceiling is their armor value so i'm not going to move them out of uh, a tier humans this is where they start to possibly start to struggle a little bit and i'm actually going to drop them down to b tier because their lack of stats and a lack of Lack of identity, I think, means that, yes, they're still effective. I'm not saying that humans are a bad team, but I don't think that they are as strong now as Union Elves. I think if you had a one one game must win, I would play Union Elves. If you were playing a league, I think the Union Elves would be able to beat them. So I can't put them in the same bracket, and I definitely think Union Elves go there. And that's just because humans, stat-wise, struggle. They can't do anything super amazing. They don't do anything badly either, though. Imperial Humility might suffer the same fate here because they are expensive. And if you think about what Imperial Humility would be playing against, the Imperial Union Elves would just be better. They, they're still expensive, so you've now got less skills if you're playing at the same team value point. Or you're playing up team, yeah, you're playing from the overdog perspective. And once people have got skills and they're getting inducements, that inducement is either one or two things broadly. It's going to be a star player that tips the balance in your opponent's favour, or it's going to be. Uh, some bribes and they're going to foul you off the field and imperial ability are finally weak and therefore i think they're just dropping for me they're just going to just drop down a little bit uh, let's go and fish out the remaining ones so we've got nurgle here um i'm actually going to uprate these i think they're starting to get better and there is actually a possibility there is a possibility that they could possibly go in the b tier because nurgle of now at, at, at you have 15 1600 team value you've got Block on all the rotters, uh, the bloaters, which are the strength four players. We're going to have a reliable big, big guy, as much as they ever are. We're going to have Pestigors that can do stuff. And why well, maybe I've spread this a little bit wide, but at, at the 1700 team value mark, I think they're B tier. At the 1300 team value mark, they're C tier. So depends on where you take your break here. So I'm going to take the midpoint. And I think maybe the midpoint, I'm going to leave them in C tier. But there's an argument for B. Uh, we've got Chaos Chosen, which I think were in the B tier before. Let's have a quick look. Chaos Chosen were indeed in B tier. Um, where are they now? Well, I'm going to put them in A tier. I think they got stronger. I think they're more powerful. Their four, strength four players, the Chosen Warriors, are now being able to dominate the place. They'll have picked up their Ogre. Their Ogre will have Guard. So they've got stronger than they were in Blood Bowl 2. And their Goats will also be able to add various skills. Yes, they don't have Claw, Mighty Blow, and Piling On anymore. But they've still got the ability to take... Dirty player. They're not an ex inherently expensive roster. I'm going to move them up to A tier. I think they would they would beat humans in Imperial Ability at the medium team values through better skills, better skill access, cheaper skills, better stat lines. So I'm going to move them up. So I've lifted both of the Chaos teams up so far. So what does that do to Chaos Renegades? Well, Chaos Renegades, I also think, need to go in the A tier. I think they are strong, and I think you can get results out of them. Um, and this is because now you can take secondary skills. You can put block on all three of big guys. You've got the access to put defensive on them if you really wish to. Um, and I think that they can do stuff. And I've had a lot of fun playing them. So maybe I'm just biased. But I think Chaos Renegades are both fun and reasonably strong. But I accept that they str probably straddle somewhere between the A and B tiers. I don't think they are a clear A team. And I don't think they're necessarily a clear B team either. Old World Alliance... Um, no. <clears throat> Black Orcs also no. So, I'm not going to discuss those ones. I just think they are they are just now lagging behind the proper teams in Blood Bowl. And they are just really struggling. And it's very clear that they their win rates are, 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 are not great. People will point at Fumble and say, Fumble, well, Old World Alliance win rates are great. I think what that's doing is they're talking about all the star players, which Blood Bowl 3 currently doesn't have. And I think that if uh, an average player played Old World Alliance, 
they would really struggle in the mid game. They're just not reliable. Oh, let's go and do the last one. The high TV teams. What on earth does this look like? So this is 1760 plus. And, and again, you could easily have said 1800 team value teams, 2400 team value teams. If you want to go and fetch a 2400 team value team, I think it's Nurgle. <laughs> Nurgle are probably the strongest end game team in terms of end game being high in team value because if you can get them there and you have the patience, the willpower and everything else that requires Nurgle, maybe they're here. They're certainly here, right? They're definitely my benchmark goes into A. a. I'm going to put them in S and we'll have to do a final balance on this round because I'm talking about 1800 team value plus. They're hampered a little bit by their ability to get sneaky, get and dirty player. So I'm, I'm really I'm really torn here. Uh, however, I'm going to put them in A tier. I'm going to put them in A tier. And that's because I'm going to put Chaos Chosen in S tier. Again, if you're talking about super powerful, um, they have the ability to be very dangerous. So I'm going to put these two up here. Uh, Dark Elves, which were in the S tier, are now for me dropping to A tier. I think they're very competitive. I think they're very strong. And I'm going to put them here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because they have got the ability to get random strength skills, specifically guard. But they're at 40 team value a pop. They can't just go and spam low skills like a Chaos Chosen team or a Nurgle team can. And strength skills, uh, I believe, are one of the stronger skill trees. So I'm going to put them in A tier. Again, I think I'm going to play around with these afterwards. Chaos Renegades, I'm going to lift these up and put these in A tier as well. I think these are strong. Um... I think that the big guys will now have block guard. I think you'll have either the Minotaur or the Rat Ogre with Claw Mighty Blow and block. The Dark Elf will be doing absolutely disgusting Dark Elf things with two heads. It's effectively pseudo edge five. You can run a thrower if you wish. The linemen are cheap. You've got the ability to take a goblin with sneaky kit, dirty player. Like I think Chaos Chosen build into something very strong. The only thing I wonder about Chaos Chosen is what on earth do you use to surf stuff with? I don't know. It's an interesting one, so maybe they get down here. If you can't surf, you need to go and beat here, possibly. Okay, next, Dwarves. So, Dwarves were sort of sat in the A and S tiers for the, the last three bandings. I think they get, they've got a drop. While Claw Mighty Blow and Piling On would have definitely meant for me that they would have set in B tier, Piling On doesn't exist anymore as a skill, which is good, but it means that they're, they're guard spam Dwarves. They don't die as much. They're strong and Thick Skull, they're, they're, they're less susceptible to fouling. So I'm going to go with putting them in the A tier because I think that they match up and still stack up against a lot of teams really effectively. And I also think the Sneaky Git Death Roller still stacks up really well against a lot of the high team value teams. And I think that you've just got to, you've just got to say that they're a really strong team. I do wonder if they were here. And I think from a power on the pitch perspective they might be A tier but from getting a result maybe not and therefore I might need to twiddle around these guys because if you're talking about getting results maybe they need to come down a little bit humans are now B tier I think that's reasonable um, possibly even C tier actually because their lack of skills they're falling off they've been falling off for a while and are humans able to one turn not reliably most teams can shut them down are the ability to grind out an eight turn drive reliably? No. Have they got lots of removability? No. Uh, have they saved up for lots of stats which are really expensive? Possibly. So I think I'm actually going to drop humans from B to C. I think their, their power curve is just falling away, right? They start really great and they just get comparatively worse. They're not an inherently bad team. They're just other teams have run past them in the rel relay race. I think Imperial Ability sit in the same pro uh, sit with the same problem, they're, but they're expensive. So while they have some more fun skills, they pay for it through the nose. So I'm going to put humans and Imperial Ability in the same box. Orcs, I'm going to lift up to A tier. And with the big ones, with, being, with an increased movement speed, there is an argument that they go in S tier. And I think we'll, we'll tune the A and the S tiers at the end. Old World Alliance can sit in the D tier. Uh, they're just struggling. Uh, they, they, yeah, they are effectively human linemen without all the fun stuff. So I'm going to put Old World Alliance here. Skaven. I think I'm going to put Skaven in S tier. They've got the ability with randoming, with all the skill access, um, to do absolutely everything. And so I'm going to put them straight in the S tier. They're not giving anything up. 
And with the current rule set, as it is in Blood Bowl 3, without expensive mistakes, they've got the ability to absolutely rinse people for, mo for money. So one touchdown equals 10k. Yeah, okay. I, I, they're not going to run out of money. They're not going to fall into a death spiral like they did in Blood Bowl 2. They can have a sneaky get dirty player gutter runner. They've got sidestepping gutter runners for one turning. They've got claw mighty blow. I think I think Skaven are possibly, possibly, I'm going to say they're the most powerful team in the game. There's a, there's a statement. Skaven, most powerful team in the game. Right, Union Elves. Union Elves I'm going to stick in B tier with currently the Chaos Renegades. I think they're starting to fall off hard against Mighty Blow Tackle. Mighty Blow Tackle, they get removed one in three now. That's problematic. Yes, they've got some fun players. They've got some catches and some blitzes. But can half a team carry an entire team to victory? With a wizard nerf, I think not. If the wizard was as it was, maybe. But the wizard now, uh, the lightning bolt effectively uh, is nowhere near as powerful. It's a 3 plus rather than a 2 plus. Star players are not fully in the game yet. No, I think they're a B tier team. And that leaves us with Black Orcs. And I'm going to put Black Orcs solidly in the D tier. Uh, I think I'd broadly play almost anything other than these guys now. So Old Run Alliance and Black Orcs are two of the weaker teams. I don't see them changing. And I don't see how you get anything out of Black Orcs. This might just be my uh, lack of knowledge on Black Orcs, to be honest. I'm, I'm not a Black Orc coach. I've only really seen them played properly uh, a handful of times. And I just, I'm just not inspired by them. So, right, up to here. If I'm saying that these are the six most powerful endgame teams, do I actually agree with that statement? And are are they in the right place? Are Skaven and Chaos Chosen the two most powerful endgame teams? Could you put Dwarves up there? If you put Chaos Chosen versus Dwarves at 1800 team value, what would happen? Hmm. What would happen? So the Dwarves would turn up with their eight, their 10 guard, 8 guard, rookie numbers. They'd turn up with their 10 guard. The Apothecary would uh, turn up with guard. The, the, the Bench would turn up with guard. And then they'd have their sneaky get death roller. And I think they would really struggle to let anyone score against them. But again, inherently, they're going to be playing against 30% removal Chaos Chosen. I think the Chaos Chosen would stand a good chance. And I think the Chaos Chosen would stand their ground and I think they'd be okay because they've now got the additional big guy. The Skaven would run away. The Skaven would score the one turn. I think that's fine. So I don't think Dwarves are more powerful than either of these. So I'm going to leave these here. Do I think Orcs have got more powerful? I think the Claws caused them problems. The Speed would cause them problems. I don't think they're an A tier, they're, they're an a -tier team. Dark Elves are an interesting one. I'm going to put Dark Elves up here actually because I think they are super powerful. I think they can win stuff. And I think if you were thinking about with the ability, with redraft not in the game, with expensive snakes not in the game, Dark Elves will be able to hold a really strong treasury. And actually, I'm going to put Dark Elves up here. And as, as an elf coach, I think having two agility teams and only one strength team at the top really suits me. Finally, Nurgle. I think Nurgle just going to inherently be worse than Chaos Chosen. The reason I think this is because they're an inherently more expensive roster. Regen's okay, but I think they're just being a slightly more uh, expensive roster. Unless you were going to like 2600 team value plus, I just think Nurgle are really going to struggle. So that's my final answer on these teams here. And I think Chaos Renegades get a notable mention that could also be in the A tier. If you can play Chaos Renegades, I think you can pull them up. But they are also fundamentally playing with linemen type people. And if I'm battering Old World Alliance for playing with old world, uh, with linemen, it seems disingenuous to suddenly say that Chaos Renegades, because they're not uncool, get lifted up. So that's my final answer on high team value. So just to round it out, where did I put everyone? Let's have a look. At rookie, t at rookie numbers. Rookie numbers, we've got Dwarves and Humans being the most powerful, Nurgle sucking, and Orcs and Skaven being pretty strong. At low team value, I have Dwarves and Skaven, Orcs and High Elves, uh, Dark Elves. Makes a lot of sense, I think. These are the four most powerful teams. So currently, Dwarves have done really well. Humans have fallen off a little bit. Nurgle just haven't got any better. At medium team value, we've got Dwarves, Orcs, Dark Elves and Skaven. So we can start to see that Dwarves and Skaven and Dark Elves and Orcs really are the most powerful teams in 
uh, in the core rulebook, and they don't seem like they're they're falling off. Nurgle have become not the worst team in Blood Bowl right now, um, but unfortunately, you're probably miserable playing them. So, and then the middling teams are still the middling teams. <clears throat> and then finally, I rounded it out with the high team value teams. We've lifted it, Nurgle up to the A tier for both the coaches that have finally got there. Well done, you've climbed Everest. And the power teams are still mostly here. Dwarves have fallen down a little bit. Um, and I think they should also get minus one for being most of the most unfun team in Blood Bowl. So maybe they should fall into a B tier. But broadly, I think this is fair. So how much controversy have I caused? I don't know. That's my genuine thoughts. Um, I had put a little bit of thought into it beforehand. If you've enjoyed the video and would like me to do a skills guide version as well, please put a comment in the section below. Um, so until next time, thank you very much for watching. I've been Andy Davo, and I'll, maybe I'll see you sometime on Twitch. Thank you.